down to Gainesville. Independent Florida Alligator Sports Editor Ryan Haley joining Peter Burns here on the Paul Feinbaum Show. Ryan, let's talk about it. Like, what, what is the buzz right now around this team that has a lot of question marks in Gainesville with Dan Mullen and, uh, and uh, you know, getting ready for 2021? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I mean, it's an honor to be here, and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity. But, uh, yeah, I mean, in regards to the team, it's just – it's a lot of unknown, which breeds a lot of excitement. Um, no one really knows what a team like helmed by Emory Jones is really going to look like in terms of having him at the quarterback. Um, they lost a Heisman candidate, a quarterback, a Blitnikoff finalist, a tight end, um, first round draft pick at receiver. So it's really just everyone's kind of that, that like off season excitement and getting ready for football is just kind of multiplied by the fact that no one's really sure what team they're going to see on the field. You know, and Ryan, this year feels different, right? I mean, last year, everything was kind of in this bubble, um, you know, literally. And and now kids are getting back on campus. There's a little bit more momentum building. Um, what do you think it's going to be like when the swamp opens up and those crowds come back in? I, I mean, it's, it's kind of surreal to think about. So I, I'm a junior, and so the last time we really had anything – normal would have been my freshman year mm -hmm. and it's really just kind of bizarre um i mean it's i don't really know if it's really fully fair to say that things are going to feel exactly like they did in 2019 but there's going to be that little tinge of just anytime something is kind of absent for a while and then returns it's always a little bit surreal and i mean i'd be making i'd be doing a disservice and kind of make throwing a dart at the board if I tried to predict what my emotions would feel like the first time I see a stadium full again so when you look at it Ryan like what was the hardest part for you right you know trying to be a journalist doing all this great work down there and having to deal with the probably you know the last 18 months oh man from my I mean I like feel like all things considered with who I have down here and the people that I've met through I mean I started working at the alligator last fall so like the first semester I had post covid and so I feel like the people I met really kind of made that transition fairly smooth um and once everyone kind of got the hang of being like online and having that different atmosphere instead it felt like it was a fairly easy transition so I feel like I was a lot luckier than most people but uh there was definitely tinges of social isolation that everyone felt, but all things considered, I feel like I was fairly lucky. So whenever you have freshmen that are stepping on campus for, for the first time in Gainesville, you being what I think you said a junior, you've been there for a couple of years. What's the biggest piece of advice? What do you tell them the do's and don'ts down there? Well, I can't show them around campus because I've only been there for like five months longer than they have. <laughs> but, um, but just in general, I think the biggest thing that I came to realize over the year and a half was just don't take every day-to-day -day interaction so seriously like it's college it's you're meant to enjoy yourself you're meant to meet people you're meant to kind of broaden your horizons realize who you want to spend your time with and what you want to spend your time doing and so when I was a freshman I felt like the clock was already ticking for me and I'm mm -hmm. realizing further and further now that it really wasn't as hard as I thought it was and so just like like put your effort into your life and make sure you like enjoy what you're doing and find that but don't feel like you like the world is going to end if you like don't have a productive day every single day i mean listen that that's advice you're telling as a college student that every single one of us listening or watching uh, i i need to you know be reminded of every single day that it's okay to smile and have a good time um i mean what makes you smile when you when you're at practice and you're you're covering this team right now and for you guys what is it that you're smiling about for for florida football this upcoming season Ooh, from Florida football. Um, I'm really excited. I, I mean, it's a bit of an unknown, but I'm really excited to see what the running back room looks like. Um, they have two long-term uh, guys in Damian Pierce and Malik Davis that have really um, kind of been stalwarts for the team in ways that I don't really know that they've always been appreciated for. And then two recent five-star transfers in Lorenzo Lingard and Marcus Bowman. And then seeing what's happening in the cornerback room uh, with guys trying to take playing time there. You talk about the cornerback kill, I think is what Jaden Hill tore his ACL. What's the status there of what that's going to look like on the on the other side and who's going to fill those roles? Do you know yet? Uh, it's that no one's ever going to have a set answer before the season begins. Uh, yeah, it was really unfortunate for J uh, for Jaden Hill. It's his second torn ACL, actually, which is just really unfortunate for a defensive back. Um, 
But Dan Mullen actually in media earlier this week listed off like six or seven guys that are taking reps at cornerback too. Um, Jason Marshall is a five-star prospect, but he's a true freshman, and it's bizarre in the SEC, and even more so in the uh, e- even more so in a Dan Mullen system for a true freshman to really play. And uh, but you have guys like redshirt freshmen Avery Helm and Ethan Pouncey are playing. Um, uh, he's mentioned Jadarius Perkins and Elijah Blades, who are transfer corners that have been getting time. I will say this. I love the fact that we ended up having to pause the video there on the Zoom or the FaceTime. If for no other reason, it seemed like you were in the witness text, uh, protection plan, right? Like Dan Mullen was listening oh. into our conversation, and he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be giving up any state secrets here. <laughs> oh, trust me. I don't think Dan has much to worry about there. No, um, I, I apologize for that. I, I don't know what happened. No, um, it, it's all good. My, la- my last question for you here, though. Uh, you talked about, you know, Dan Mullen on a scale to zero to Tim Tebow, as far as the most beloved person in the history of the w- human uh, mankind, right? Where is Dan Mullen rank on campus right here, right now? Um, I mean, it kind of depends on who you ask, but for the most part, I think Dan Mullen's a fairly like well, a, well, like well adored man on campus. I mean, yeah. if you ask, like, I, I know more of my friends that like really appreciate what he's doing with the program more than I know people that don't. So I would, I'd probably put it like a seven or an eight. Like if he, if he, if we had all the students at university of Florida sitting in the swamp and he walked out of the field, he'd get a pretty big cheer. I was going to say he has a little bit of an edge and he's brought a lot of uh, fun over to that program. Last question for you. What, what is it that you want to do in five years from now? I'm having this conversation with you. What are you doing? I mean, part of what drew me into journalism is I've always loved writing. It's been, kind of my big love um i my first dream growing up was to be an author and if that's a path that i wound up taking in life i'd appreciate that but uh just the marriage of writing and sports and having roles like that potentially and on like an on-air analyst thanks for watching espn on youtube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to espn plus